fixed. We've got a complicated setup here in East Denver. I'm Kyle Langham, and I'm joined with Ashlyn Connolly. How are you doing, Ashlyn? Good to be here with you. Oh, uh, I'm I'm exhausted. We're a couple days into East Denver. You've got to be more exhausted. You've been here uh, the whole week, longer than a week. Uh, how are you feeling? I have my chapstick like permanently in my hand. I have my water. I'm like trying to hydrate as much as possible. I saw some tips on Twitter last week before coming and I was like, why do they care so much about chapstick? And now I realize. I forgot my chapstick yesterday. My lips are really chapped. I don't think I'm going to recover. <laughs> the air here is really dry, but yeah. the vibes are awesome. Yeah. Are you feeling the same way? For sure. I think it's quite... A bit of a difference this year compared to yeah a few of the events last year. It's been nice to see it. So, uh, so uh, we're going to recap, I guess, in this space. We're just going to have a conversation, try to basically catch everyone up on what's going on at East Denver. There's a lot of exciting things going on, so we're probably going to just jump topic to topic to topic. Uh, but I think that's probably the best place to start is just uh, this year, it seems like East Denver's happening. There's not just East Denver itself, but there's so many side events. Um, you know, Bitcoiners showed up here as well. There's a lot going on. Like the crypto world is in Denver right now. Um, are you catching the same thing? Yeah, for sure. I think, I mean, always with these events, the thing that I've learned is that the side events are where the real action is. <laughs> Shouldn't say that. I mean, of course, but uh, yeah, it's uh, like jumping around town to all these different events and then different things in the evening, all day, all night. It's super cool. Like, it's really cool to see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. So, well, just starting off, so you gave a talk uh, earlier this week, right? Multi-chain um, uh, focus. Do you want to kind of like recap on what, uh, on what, in terms of just chain key technology? Like, give me, give me, give us some like information on like where the talk was held at, uh, and like what a high level overview of like what you guys were uh, chatting about. So yeah, I mean, there's been a few things going on this week. Um, Maybe I should introduce myself also. Like, this is oh, yeah. maybe, I don't know. If That's a good place to start. start. <laughs> yeah. Let's start at the start. So, I'm Ashling. Um, I'm a researcher at Definity, and I'm leading a lot of the multi chain efforts at the moment. So, I think our mission in coming here, at least for me, was very much to hear what is going on in this kind of multi chain narrative at the moment. And to also kind of explain to people what we have been doing in this uh, mm. in this situation. So, a lot of the kind of things that I've been going to have been around that focus. And um, like maybe just to kind of recap a little bit our multi-chain narrative and then we go into the events. Sure. Um, like, because maybe it gives some context. I think with the internet computer, generally a lot of the goal originally was to sort of decentralize the web. And I think having built the infrastructure in the way that we did and having, you know, dApps that can be hosted, you know, 100% on chain, front end, back end, everything kind of decentralized, and then having this coupled with features like HTTPS outcalls that allow you to actually communicate directly with the internet kind of gives you the situation where you sort of realize this decentralized, verifiable web. So we had this, you know, three years ago now almost when the network launched. So this is great. But then uh, last year and this year, we kind of focused a lot on integrating with other chains. So with mm -hmm. Bitcoin and with Ethereum. So now we can read and write with Bitcoin and Ethereum and it quite trustless way we'll move on to other things later this year but yeah so now we have a lot that we can kind of talk around the internet way in a nice decentralized way we can talk to bitcoin and ethereum in a nice decentralized way so the question is now a bit like how can we package all of this together to make like a super beautiful sort of developer experience where people can build apps that kind of cross like all of the internet all of the blockchains this kind of stuff and so I mean, in trying to think about how to get people on board with these ideas, because it's a lot of stuff, like it's a lot of stuff. And, um, you know, the fact that it's actually there and usable now is kind of a new idea to a lot of people. And so I guess for me, like a huge part of this is education. So explaining to people what this is, actually how it works, where the ideas came from, why it's actually decentralized, why we can make these uh, claims about trustlessness, why we can make claims of, you know, decentralized communication, this kind of stuff. And um, so one of the first events that I actually, I think the first day that I arrived was um, an event organized by ICP Hubs at the University of Colorado in Denver. Okay. Yep. Um, where I gave a talk about chain key cryptography generally, basically on the IC. How, how do threshold signatures work? Why does this give us the kind of guarantees that we claim? 
why does it not just give us only signatures but so much more like all this kind of verifiable randomness a lot of the um yeah like the features like bet keys coming up a lot of the integrations like talking to bitcoin signing on eth signing on solana maybe later this year this kind of stuff so mm-hmm. that was really for me the kind of it was a very nice way to land, actually. You're, like, arriving in Denver, going back to school, and, like, sitting in a classroom <laughs> with people. And it was super nice. Like, they were, uh, it was very engaged, and more than I expected, actually. Um, there were a lot of great questions, and a lot of people asking, ah, is this like that, and is this like, you know. So people actually have a pretty good understanding of what is going on in crypto, and they kind of start to be able to reason about what is yeah what are the similarities and the differences between different things and i think this is really the start of like actual understanding in the industry it's very cool i think that's probably like that is how i would describe so far eat denver is people having that aha moment around the internet computer like across the industry i think we'll probably touch on some other points i do have a question do they call you professor when you're in the classroom? No, I'm not no. a professor. No, not professor. Someone was joking and saying, like, should we call you Ash or, like, uh, Ashling or, like, Dr. Connolly? And I was like, I don't know. You can call me my DGen names if you know them. <laughs> <laughs> what about, um, so, like, the, the students, were they mostly, uh, you know, developers, students, like, actual students at the college? Like, what was the audience of the, the talk? It was mostly developer focused, I think. Um, yeah, like they were students also. Some of them actually studying cryptography. Some of them just developers that came along for the event. Um, but yeah, it was kind of developer focused. I guess the ones that l- know more about infrastructure and things like this rather than just applications. I see. I it was see. cool. So that was Tuesday. Yeah. And then Wednesday, uh, East Denver, the, the main event hadn't opened yet. So I'm trying to even remember back what we did on Wednesday. <laughs> I think I was flying in. Um, what were, I, where my, like, were you at a party? I can't even remember what we were doing on Wednesday. Well, I can see on your face that you don't remember. <laughs> it's been a long week. Like the days just all kind of blur into one. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, uh, then uh, I know on Thursday. I know on Thursday there was, um, yeah, there were, I met actually a lot of, so yeah, I went around to various different side events on on Wednesday. Um, I think mostly there was some stuff around the chain abstraction and mm. yeah, there were some privacy events as well. So these were the ones that I went to a lot as well. Also talking about threshold stuff, threshold signatures, and how we can use them nicely. And yeah, I met a lot of cool people. Good, good. I mean, it's definitely chain abstraction is the chain abstraction or account abstraction, depending on who you're talking to. Those are the themes of Eat Denver this year, um, at least it seems like. And and it's kind of funny because I feel like every conversation I have with somebody, it's like, well, this team is going to do this, you know, in six months. And, you know... It always comes back around to like, well, I know, but we're kind of doing that already on the internet computer. Like yeah. we, we have the youth integration now, so uh, we're, we're already there. Um, yeah. Have you found some more? Yeah. So, I mean, one of the kind of nicest surprises for me was, I mean, their reaction to this multi-chain narrative. Mm-hmm. Like I was at another event, I think on Thursday, um, this open information house. It's a super nice initiative. Um, like you can check them out on Twitter, I guess. But uh, yeah, they had an event that's actually running three days, and it was super nice. And like the, they had really a lot of great talks and panels. But uh, I was on a panel just kind of debating a bit why open it. Why do we need open information? Mm-hmm. And there, I kind of introduced myself as kind of somebody working on multi-chain at uh, Definity and at the Internet Computer. And, like, the response was, like, yes, you guys are doing this. And we were, like, yeah, of course. Like, uh, how how have you not seen this? Um, but, yeah, like, they, there was a lot of interest, like, a surprising amount of interest. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of people are thinking about building a lot of stuff and kind of looking for tools and looking for infrastructure. And I was, like, man, guys, you are a little bit behind. Like, I mean, some of the... <laughs> projects building on ICP at the moment kind of already are using these tools and are like integrating them and so I think especially around Bitcoin DeFi and I mean Bitcoin is getting a lot of attention as well yeah this is where we kind of can shine very well and I think the projects that are building on IC already have quite a head start and so it was kind of cool to see uh, the reaction from some of the builders here, like, ah, we, sh- we need to get on this. Yeah, I, I spent Thursday, so the main event started on Thursday, but I spent Thursday at Bitcoin Renaissance, uh, which was 
I don't know, 10 minutes down the street. Um, they did a phenomenal job. Uh, There's probably like a thousand Bitcoiners there. They were there to talk about L2s and, uh, you know, EVMs uh, that, you know, like Rootstock that talk, uh, talk with Bitcoin. Um, and the, but the, the general theme was there's, there's two, there was like two classes of projects. There was those who had been building for like the last five years, right? So like the Rootstock is a great example. Stacks was there. Um, and they're kind of like, they're trying to, their, their vibe was per, very much like, what is our place in this new, like this Bitcoin economy just blew up in the last four months. And they're trying to figure out, okay, like how do we, how do we position ourselves? Cause it's evolved in the last four months. It has evolved more than it had the last five years. Um, and then you have all the new players who are coming in and saying, you know, we're going to have an EVM, uh, for Bitcoin in you know, a year from now, or here's our three phase plan, you know, to build, you know, uh, like, um, Build on Bitcoin, Bob is uh, um, uh, a big project that's going on, and they presented their three their three phase plan, and and you get this feeling where like, guys, the time is now. Like, yeah. Bitcoin is now, and if you're not building now, if you're not deployed now, you're missing your window. Um, so that was really cool to see. I ran into Bob Bodley, uh, and that I, I, I love Bob. Uh, I make no no uh, no no secret of that. And it was really cool to see, uh, like, Bob in his element. Like, he's always been ICP, but he has uh, become a huge technical voice in Bitcoin. So just as he and I are talking, it's just person after person coming up, like, hey, Bob, you know, I just wanted to, like, say, and, and that is, I won't name drop, but there were some pretty big names in Bitcoin that were coming up to Bob to say, say thank you. Um, but I, I just kind of felt like, yeah, I mean, We've got a head start because we had the integration. Uh, you know, Definity definitely had the forward thinking to do the integration at a time when nobody was talking about building on Bitcoin for the most part. Um, and I think already that that shines in the sense that we're not talking about we're not making a pivot to Bitcoin. We've been there for a year. There's already projects that are deploying. Um, I don't know if uh, you know. You know, Definity wasn't there as like a sponsor or anything, so we maybe we didn't get the chance to kind of highlight everything that was going on but there's like ckbtc is um the fastest growing uh um, synthetic bitcoin you know whatever that class would be it's already the seventh largest in uh cross chain tbl um on uh, defi llama um you can see ckbtc transactions have like tripled in the last 30 days uh volume has tripled like it's just actually no i'm sorry it's actually it's 600 percent in the last three months is um the transaction so um you can kind of get this feeling of like, yeah, we've got the momentum behind us. We're not, we're not waiting for, you know, for the integration to, to get there. And then we'll start building and, you know, that stuff. Like we already have that momentum going in. Um, and there were a few people who kind of know I'm, you know, I had my Definity shirt on and there were a few people who were like, you got to explain ICP. Like I'm a Bitcoiner. Like I've, I've lived in the stacks world my whole life. I keep hearing ICP. Can you just kind of give me like the TLDR? Like why, what are you guys doing that's different? So there's there's some traction there that, that was really cool to see. I felt like a little celebrity with my Definity shirt on, like, oh, you guys are approaching me. Um, so anyways, yeah, the the, the Bitcoin... Uh, um, at, now, they maybe oversold. They, they were saying they painted the town orange. You go to the Bitcoin uh, Renaissance, and then I went from there to the main event at uh, uh, Denver. And purple. Uh, yeah, and everything's <laughs> purple. And I was like, yeah, there's, there's orders of magnitude, more people, more... Uh, um, activities going on at the ETH Denver uh, at the, on the Ethereum side of things, but it was still it was still really cool to see. So, um. I think uh, yeah, like something to note there as well. I mean, I don't want to drag it too much in the. I mean, sometimes we we drag it too much in the technical direction, but like one of the things that I think is r- truly special about our Bitcoin integration is exactly that it has been done for a while. It is a bit battle tested. Mm-hmm. It has gone through like security reviews and like, and it's, you know, like it's, it's good. Like it's good to go. There's no like question marks or like holding your breath to see what happens. Because I think like from Bitcoin friends of mine, I think, you know, like maybe one of the reasons why development on Bitcoin did not take off so much is because the Bitcoin maxis don't necessarily want that, you know, and mm-hmm. like, um, even if they do want it, they also want it to be like super secure. And like, uh, if you have bridges and if you have whatever sort of protocols that are not necessarily thresholdized or not necessarily like super secure cryptographically or security tested or whatever, 
they're just not going to touch it. Like, and so I think this is, I mean, for me, one of the things that I found whenever I talk to Bitcoin people is that I say like, Hey, look, you can have this in a like non-custodial way. You don't, you can get off your centralized exchanges. You don't have to manage your own keys even, Mm -hmm. but like, you know, you do have this kind of trustless solution. So, I mean, this I think is a huge benefit that we have over others because to build this, I mean, it took us a while, Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it was this kind of very forward looking thing. So, I mean, we're quite, yeah, it's, it's a good time to be here. Yeah. Well, you, like you mentioned, um, the, and that was one of the things is as people approach, um, you want flexibility, right? Somebody comes up in their maxi and they're like, no, I don't want, I don't want their, I don't want like a bridge solution. Like, like don't sell me a bridge solution. And you can flesh that out really easily, and then you easily just have the conversation of like, look, there's a Bitcoin node running, and if you want to write directly, like if you want to have yeah. a smart contract that writes, um, that signs transactions on the Bitcoin ledger, you know, you, you, can, you can do it, yeah. And then you have other people who are like, the security model doesn't really, I don't, I'm not so worried about that. I'm more interested in like, you know, X, Y, Z. like Scalability, uh, cost. Yeah, yeah, like they have their own thing, and you're like, well, you know, um, you've got CKBTC as a, as a decent solution. Or, you know, if you do want to um, wait for your six confirmations on the ledger, you have the uh, native, inter- like we, yeah. there's flexibility there for people. Like it's kind of nice because you feel like you're not trying to sell them. You're, you can meet them where they're at as you're talking exactly. to, whether it's a Bitcoin or it's any other person. And you're like, well, you know, what's important to you and actually our solution um, fits in there's pretty well. So um, I think, you know, I don't know. I, I think that the Bitcoin side of things here at ETH Denver was was pretty exciting to watch. Um, there's a there is a lot of innovation going on there, and like incredible amount of excitement. The fact that they got a thousand Bitcoiners to fly out to Denver um, and go to this one day event is during pretty an ETH conference. <laughs> during an ETH conference, yeah. Um, so yeah, so it was, uh, and and not only that, um, actually, like um, there's a couple prominent Bitcoin Bitcoiners who are at the ETH conference. Mm. Um, you know, I know uh, Munib Ali was tweeting that he didn't get quite the warmest welcome um, at ETH Denver, but there's still, it's still, it, it, you're starting to see a little bit more of that, like, cross-pollination between the two chains, and maybe, maybe we're starting to see the early signs of... Uh, For sure. I mean, also, I mean, okay, the ETH people are usually less uh, maxi than the Bitcoin people, mm-hmm. but, like, a lot of ETH, like, projects that are based kind of around the ETH ecosystem are also really asking a lot of questions about Bitcoin now. Yeah, and because I mean, they have a lot of experience in building decentralized infrastructure and applications, and it's like, well, surely we should be able to do this with Bitcoin as well. Like we are the kind of pioneers in this space, so why not, um, yeah, engage with Bitcoin as well? And so this has also been a super nice um, talking point, I think, at our booth. Like, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, we can also like you can do your ETH stuff, but you can also now do your Bitcoin stuff. Yeah. On the IC. Yeah. And obviously, if, you're, if you've are if you got an app and you want extra liquidity, Bitcoin's got a trillion dollars in liquidity. If you want, you know, brand cachet, Bitcoin, you know, when I talk to my mom and I say, she doesn't know what Ethereum is, she doesn't know what crypto is, but if I say Bitcoin, she's like, oh yeah, actually now I know what you're talking about. And I think that there's, you know, entrepreneurs who are like, actually, I wouldn't mind tapping into that brand recognition or that liquidity or that, you know, a really robust user yeah. community that bitcoin has so so a lot more cross-pollination there um you had the chance to sit down with with a few people from the ecosystem at the booth right yeah i think mostly um it was cool like it's uh, like the activity at the booth is pretty nice pretty interesting um a lot of questions about generally this multi-chain narrative like so what is ck eth what is ck btc what does it mean to have gasless transactions all this kind mm. of stuff so this is a lot of the, uh, the conversation. But I think yesterday, I think one of the most interesting conversations I had yesterday was actually with Austin, um, one of the ecosystem members. Father, fa- fathery. Fathery. Fa- fathery. Oh, gosh, now, now my, the lips are so dry. It's, yeah, yeah. It, Austin's last name is too hard to say with dry lips. Afat. This is the true handle, right? <laughs> yeah. So this is how I know him. But um, it was super nice to talk to him, actually, because he's working a lot with... Um, I see devs, I think, on standardization. And like when I talk to, let's say, friends of mine from the Ethereum ecosystem or generally anyone who's building kind of new tech stuff and you try to see like what are the problems that you face, it's always like a lack of clarity about what to do. Mm-hmm. And like the thing is, like you want to build fast, 
and you want to build stuff that you know you know will change but at the same time you don't want to just build random randomly so having some sort of design patterns having some sort of kind of frameworks that you know you could kind of build into so that like at least some of the moving parts are removed and so like having some sort of standardization process, like having some mm. standards for tokens for different types of apps. And like when you start thinking about this in a cross chain world, it becomes very messy. And so I think with Austin, a lot of the conversation was about standardization and like, how can we advise things to be built so that like, we're mm. all kind of speaking the same language um, so that not everything has to, not everything is built from scratch basically um, not everything is, yeah, incompatible with each other. Um, so, yeah, like, all of this, I think, is super interesting. And I think he's doing a lot of work on this. So I was super glad to hear that because it really needs to happen. That's awesome. Yeah, I was able to have a beer with him last night. And yeah. he's, I mean, he's just, uh, well, I didn't ask how much we could share of what he's up to. But he's got, he's got some <laughs> plans um, uh, that are pretty interesting. And I'll let him tell that story. But... That, that definitely, you know, that actually kind of brings up, uh, I hadn't really realized this, but I, walking around the conference, I've, like, the story, the narrative, the, um, the the direction that the industry is going is, like, so much different than it was just two years ago. And you're absolutely right. It does have this kind of chaotic feel of, like, well, what is important out of all of this? Mm -hmm. And what is, how should, I, like, you know, think about some of these multi-chain stuff and, like, how should I comprehend, like, how should I frame this within my own mental framework? Because it's, it's not just, like, I want to be able to swap tokens back and forth. Like, people are starting to talk about, like, like serious, like, this morning I was talking with uh, two guys from two different companies, uh, and both companies are, are um, working on debit cards, physical debit cards, but oh. paying stable coin, um, and just the, the, you know, just talking with them and they said, actually gas is kind of a problem because, yeah. uh, you know, with a debit card, you want, you want certainty in the, in the transaction fees and gas kind of makes that a little bit more challenging. Um, so it's just kind of interesting hearing, like, I was like, oh yeah, actually I'd never thought about, it. I always think of our gaslessness as like a developer, like a, or a user experience. Um, but there's actually business, uh, implications as well. So there's all this weird thinking about like, Hey, how, how should we think in this new paradigm of, uh, you know, multi-chain. For me, this is like super interesting. Like this yeah. is my favorite part where you really get me like on fire <laughs> because like, and it's not so much talked about because it's hard. Like it's hard to think it's a bit more future looking, mm. this sort of thing. Like, you know, I think a lot of the conversations, maybe this goes a bit off top. This is a bit of a tangential conversation now, but I think a lot of the topics that people discuss are very kind of short term. It's like, building now we're trying to like do stuff it's like let's just play around see how it goes see what catches let's yeah. see what actually makes money see what pumps we follow this we follow that we ditch this we move on whatever like you know this kind of stuff um and like i think this is really most of the narrative at the moment and like there's kind of these short-term trends that kind of um, come and go some of them stick like now for example pass keys is when everyone starts oh to realize gosh, that yeah. pass keys is like a hot thing right now and mpc wallets and it's like okay this one will probably stick around but like everyone right now is talking about mpc and pass keys this is one thing but like for me these are the things like okay we've been doing this all along this is like a normal part of the tech stack for us but for me like the interesting thing is like yeah, when this thing actually takes off, like when the industry is, because it's clear it's going to now. Like I think yeah. 2015, if you still had a question mark over whether the industry would survive or not, it's okay. But like it's 20, it's 10 years later now, basically. And it's like the industry is here. Like it's staying. Yeah. So like how is the world going to look when we're all using blockchains? So, and what does this mean? Like you think about your day-to-day -day life. I get up in the morning, I make a coffee, I take a shower, I go on the train to work, I, you know, I, I pay for, yeah, my stuff in the grocery store, I use my laptop at my desk, I use this, and, and it's like, okay, so where is blockchain going to fit in all of this? And so, like, blockchain does payments, it does computation, it mm. does whatever. So, like, is my debit card, exactly this thing, like, is my debit card going to, like, 
come from my bank account or from my crypto account or where is this going to be settled who's going to pay gas like what are the transaction fees going to be like what is the speed going to be like how would you like it to look yeah all this kind of stuff and the same when i open my laptop i normally google this and that and i go on gmail and i go like i look at my centralized uh, stuff I chat on WhatsApp and I use Slack and it's like, is this going to be the case? Like, will I use open chat or will I use something else? And um, yeah, how is it going to be in the future? And like day to day life, I need to vote for government stuff. Right. I need to vote for my local football team, how they should do whatever, you know, like um, I need to participate in society. How is this going to be? Am I going to be a member of DAOs that are not just uh, some weird DJs playing with NFTs and whatever? Like, yeah. is my town going to be a little DAO of its own that makes decisions? And yeah, so I think for me, this is the like super interesting conversation that's had only by a few people. Like there are some events where they really dig into these things here. Mm -hmm. And like, let's say at other, like other uh, conferences, like there's always one or two events where you find these, what I think are like the real conversations. It's like, okay, we're going to build a world where, I mean, we want control over, I mean, at first it was control over your financials and then it was control over your digital assets. And now it's control over your whole digital stuff, which is very much part of your day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. So how can we integrate those things and how can we, get around the annoying stuff about crypto like gas or like um this kind of lack of interoperability between all the stuff and yeah so for me this is the like yeah real this yeah. is the real talk yeah i you know like you mentioned like the the towns the dow towns like last night uh we, we were at a party and uh i met i'm trying to remember the city that they're from but there's guys from City Dow. Um, so City Dow is a well-known Dow that has bought land, and I think it's Wyoming, and um, the, the Dow itself owns that land. And they mentioned that, and I said, oh, you know, so I started talking about that part of City Dow that I knew, and they said, oh, no, 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 this is a different site and a different, like, a subsidiary Dow. And it was just, like, that moment of, like, oh, this is spreading. Like, yeah. Like, and, but you kind of hear that... Um, you know, I mentioned the debit card, you know, they were already talking about, they're like, look, they we're running a, like, they're talking about running a business. And they're like, it's not like, it's not that we go to the merchants and we say, hey, instead of paying Visa two and a half percent, you can pay us one percent. So no, the, the, the business model is you have to get the users. The merchants want whatever the users have. Exactly. And you have to get somebody to swap out their credit card in their wallet or their purse. You have yeah. to have them take out their credit card and then put this debit card in place. And they said, that's a hard problem. But crypto, you know, crypto can solve it. We can do point systems, you know, like your credit card points. We can do that in a much better way. We can like incorporate NFTs into this. Like we can actually make this like a better user experience for the users. That's how we're going to onboard the users, and then the merchants will follow. Uh, you know, the merchants will go wherever the users are. And you get the sense that you're like, oh, we're actually going from that mess around stage to the like actual people building real companies that are actually thinking about it from like a market penetration perspective, uh, and so. It's just kind of really cool to to, to watch and, and, and see them explore. You see, I mean, even just, maybe I, I always kind of end up with you. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this. I, I love that you look over at like the people who might be able to say, <laughs> hey, let's cut the mics off. <laughs> no, but even the people you see, like, I mean, there are people that you, you've known from the scene for years, like, and... Yeah you see them maturing and them growing up and them being the sort of leaders of the field now or of the industry basically and actually forming the companies and asking the hard questions and doing the hard work that actually brings this stuff to reality rather than just this kind of playing around mm -hmm. like testing this and that and and like actually creating a vision and building towards it and it's really cool to see like that people who started off as like these DJ and crypto kids now become the kind of serious investors yeah <laughs> like um maybe it's uh silly to say this but uh, it's cool to see it maturing for, for sure oh yeah i had a, I had a chance to interview um dan from dmail well i guess meet meet dan from dmail the ceo of um of dmail but also a chance to kind of interview him at the booth and, and get some content that way um and he said a few things that was like just to like back up your point of like that app uh so they built i mean they they, there's a bunch of storylines there. Like they built on the internet computer and then expanded um, multi-chain, and that allowed them to 
to scale their user base uh, incredibly. Um, he mentioned a couple stats. It was eight million. They've had eight million unique users, uh, and they've been only around for two and a half years. He said, and one and a half million of them are monthly active users. And so you're like, that's pretty good retention. Uh, you know, eight million people have signed up. One and a half million are still using the app on a routine basis. Um, and then also those kind of numbers, like one and a half million uh, um, users. I'm like, you've got to be one of the biggest apps in crypto. Yeah. He said, yeah, we're all, we're often, we're all the time in the top 10 of DAP radar. But he said, there are some apps that are getting, you know, getting better, better metrics of that. But um, he, uh, he, it was just a fun conversation to kind of like hear how their business evolved to multi-chain and how that basically just unlocked all these communities and, and stuff and, um, and like what that's really like meant for them. And, um, I don't know. I was just really blown away. He, he, uh, uh, I can't remember. I don't think he said this on there, but he jokingly was like, you know, I, I, you guys don't uh, ever like uh, give some stats on, on D mail, but I think we actually probably have the most canisters of, of any app uh, oh, on the IC and how, cause awesome. we always give open chat the credit of that. Yeah, or, or yeah. I'm not, but I was talking about how much, Cycles they're burning. I was like, oh, you know, actually, I probably should start pulling up some stats. I, I don't think I've ever analyzed email at all. Charts guy. I know. Well, you have some uh, work to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's the problem. You go back home from this, you're all energized. And yeah, like, yeah. I gotta, gotta look at the data. Um, but yeah, so it's it's just kind of cool to see. And that's, I mean, again, like email, like they're just they're not out to, um, you know, they're out to build an application. They've got. Uh, like this awesome like two year vision in terms of like monetization and target audience that they're looking at. They want to get into the enterprise world. Um, like they really are clear of like the value they bring to their users. It's not a DGen app. Like it's not like they're just air they're airdrop farming and and doing those like quick growth hacks. They're offering a product that has a specific use case and a value proposition, and that's their like that's how they're going about it. So you get this feeling of like okay, this is like. Good. Serious, yeah, yeah, We're growing up, yeah, yeah, just yeah, that maturity, which is which is awesome. So, um, in terms of like Eat Denver at the main event, any other things kind of stand out? And uh, I think like uh, I hate to say it, and I got a bit criticized for saying this too much, but like it's the vibes. <laughs> like, the vibes. I mean, of course, there's more <laughs> than the vibes. Like we talk about the industry maturing and people becoming, you know, like uh, serious businessmen now and whatever. But, like, it really is this nice community vibe, like, where people come together. There's, like, you know, like, all the talks and all the booths and all the events and all the parties and all the chill-out spaces and all the hackathons and all the prizes and all the merch and all the stuff. And it's just, like, I don't know, for me, this is, like, the real highlight, just seeing, like, who's around, who's building stuff. People are open, like, and it's really nice. And I think... Um, like for me in particular being here and trying to think how can we like we have a lot to offer like we talk you know we always talk about like the features that we have to offer other ecosystems and different parts of the industry but for me it's super nice to see like what can we take like I mean this is a relationship mm. we're trying to build like it's a give and take relationship it's not like you know just pushing your own stuff on other people and you know, rejecting everything that they have. It's like, okay, what is going on in your community? And like seeing how people build together, how ideas are formed, like how people actually then kind of productize and market things and like seeing the kind of full flow. This for me is super interesting to see here, like seeing, yeah, just, I mean, there are small like um, patterns, let's say, that have emerged yeah. in the ETH ecosystem over the past well, almost 10 years about how, and again, it's a bit about standardization, building stuff, like having this composability and, you know, having kind of support and like having really strong community, like close, close community vibes. Mm -hmm. This is, I think, what really helped it getting going. And it's like, if we want to engage in this world, we need to take this, like we need to be part of this and like we need to, yeah, like facilitate this. And otherwise, I mean, uh, it's just not going to happen. And like, that's one of the nicest lessons. I think uh, it's like an absolute pleasure to learn this because it's such a nice thing to have to do. Yeah, I have been, um, I, I shouldn't say pleasantly surprised, but because um, I, I probably should expect this more, but there's definitely been a lot of projects that have approached and just said, you know, 
how can we how can we work closer with the internet or with Definity? How can yeah. we? And it's not just like how do we get started building on the internet computer, but it's more like, hey, like how, what do you guys need from us? Yeah, yeah. Like we want to, we want to, yeah. What can we offer you guys to get you strategically interested in our in, in our direction? Um, and so yeah, a lot of a lot of contacts there to follow up on, and um, I don't know. It's just uh, uh, cool to see because I, I you kind of do get this like Ethereum, the Ethereum ecosystem is is tends to think about the Ethereum ecosystem. The internet computer is not part of that, or we've only recently become part of that with with our EVM RPC. Um, so it's kind of cool though to see like you know the 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 Definity name is really well known around the space. The internet computer name is really well known around the space. And now that people are hearing about um, you know our RPC capabilities, they're like, oh okay, well yeah, we're, come come on into this club and and uh, and let's talk about like uh, how we can work together. Yeah, and it it is quite welcoming it's like okay come on in let's show you how this works yeah, like, uh, yeah. let's let us show you around town let's uh, like if you want to if you want to come and play with this in this town basically here's what you need to know and for me this is like super valuable because this is kind of like the kind of information or the, or the kind of feeling or the kind of i don't know you can only get by coming to these things like you can't pick this up on quit crypto twitter like this, right i mean there's no documentation for how communities work you know i mean maybe there are some blog posts or whatever but like if you want to actually work with a group of people where is the where is the documentation like where is the protocol, right right you know? right and so this is something that you only get by being here and for me this is like the real highlight of being at these types of events yeah yeah you can't um as much as we want to live digitally in Web3, there's still something to be said about being face-to-face, -face, you know. And, uh, I mean, the, the feeling that you get when you've talked to somebody for, like, years online and then you actually meet them in person. And um, so that's actually been a really cool thing. You know, obviously, anyone, uh, you know, the ICP ecosystem, you know, everyone from our community who's been here in Denver, they've been stopping by the Definity the, the booth and, you know, and, you know, they're like, hey, you know, it, it's me. And I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't know. And then they say their Twitter handle and I'm like, Oh yeah, we've been chatting forever. Like, yeah, like yeah. this is so cool to meet you in person, and yeah. like to put a, a, a physical body behind a three D human thing. Yeah, yeah. Like that. That's been so much fun. Um, I loved uh, yesterday. I got to talk with uh, some of the people from Octopus Network. So they're building Omni, um, which is really just like the case study for multi-chain in my opinion like yeah. what they're building is just basically the the the, the vision for what we want multi-chain of like real seamless experience across the web3 landscape um they put out a tweet earlier on uh, i think yesterday that that um i'd recommend everyone go ahead and find um actually i think you can see octopus network in the uh they're in the space so oh, hello. Um, yeah yeah so everyone check out their twitter handle they're, they've got a tweet in there that does a real great job of going in yeah depth of why. super yeah, nice. and so it just is again going into that like the the theme of this conference is definitely multi chain. It's going under some different. It depends on who you talk to. They'll say multi chain. I've heard omni chain mentioned a lot. Um, cross chain, I've, cross chain, interoperability. Chain <laughs> like, yeah, chain abstraction, account account abstraction, which is I guess like a, just a subset. Um, probably, um, I've seen that. The other theme I've seen also is monolithic. Uh, everyone in the Ethereum community is like monolithic like we want just one tech stack oh they're moving away no i think like, i also oh, really? seen like that they're moving away to this module like they're moving away from this monolithic infrastructure to this modular infrastructure where i can take pieces of this execution environment i can take pieces of solana or near i can take pieces of icp i can take pieces of like celestia data availability mm. i can take i can take my consensus from here my execution from there my settlement here and uh, so I think this is also a huge narrative that I've seen as well. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's really. I mean, if you're a developer, that's really what you want. You you want to use the tools you already know. You don't want to have to learn a whole bunch of new tools. Um, and you also just want it like you don't want complexity. Yeah. Because if you're already trying to if you're already trying to push the envelope on tech, uh, and then you add complexity into that, you're just going to be beating your head against a wall like over and over and over again. So. Yeah, it's uh, and I mean, all these different parts have different pros and cons and maybe in different situations and different types of apps some of them are more or less relevant and so mm -hmm. i think having this sort of 
flexibility to choose the bits and pieces that you want from the different uh, layers of the stack. This is this is great. Yeah. You know, um, another topic that's been really interesting, and I think, you know, everyone tries to time their, their news releases around Ethember. They want, they want the conference, everyone talking about it. Um, obviously, you mentioned Passkey already with Coinbase coming out with their Passkey option. Um, uh, our, we've also had their AO announcement, um, and I've had a few people approach and say, hey, we saw, you know, we heard about AO or we saw the press release, and I just want to see what's, what's different between what they're trying to do and what you guys are already doing. I just keep, I mean, I answer, I was like, well, it's not, it's not our job to tell, to tell why they're different than us. Like we, we, you know, we've been here, like go ask them, like they're here, their booth is just around the corner, go talk to them and find out like what, what the difference is. Um, so I have kind of felt like that little bit of vindication of like, you know, we, we have been ahead of the curve, uh, and, and really, you know, people don't want to say it, but we're kind of trend setting and, and there are other projects are looking to what we're doing and being like, Oh, that's a great idea. Let's, let's go ahead and go down that road. So I've heard people start talking about like, Hey, we're going to try to do a, a native Bitcoin integration. Um, yeah, that's yeah. what I've been brought up a few times. Um, and it's, and it's, it's one of those things, um, like in my opinion, it, uh, and I think this has been borne out time and time again, when you're the only one doing it, uh, it doesn't, it, it's not, it's not as interesting as when other people do it. So for example, Bitcoin integration is a great example of, um, you know, we did it and then all of a sudden ordinals, uh, kind of kicks off this new interest in it. And, and that only helps us. It, it's not yeah, a, exactly. like, you know, stacks with their Nakamoto release is not, a, um, it doesn't hurt us. That actually brings more awareness of, of our Bitcoin integration and both both projects can benefit from it, and you're seeing it with um, our weave AO as well. Bringing I- this idea of you know storage and compute in in a single platform is very powerful, and it's like yeah, that's that's right. And so the more the merrier, because like that just brings more and more validation to um, you know the the tech stack that we've built, and it brings just more awareness of of what we've done. So it's been really fun to watch that happen as well. Yeah, it's interesting actually. Um, yeah, to see it, I think validation is a nice thing because I think at the you know like earlier on in the kind of blockchain industry, you know, decentralization was god. Like this, not even decentralization, but like numbers, like big numbers, mm. like uh, huge amounts of validators or huge amounts of replication. At you least you had to have a high Nakamoto. I mean, yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, not that many people achieve a very high Nakamoto coefficient, but like at least uh, having numbers of replication uh, somehow yeah. was good. And now it's like, okay, well, actually, I mean, if we do want to use these things and if we do want to have them in reality, like having, you know, I mean, other things are needed. And mm-hmm. it's cool to see that the kind of design decisions that were made in the internet computer in the early days are kind of now being um, realized and accepted and maybe even mimicked or whatever. So it's really cool to see. Uh, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, so like you mentioned like the decentralization, that's a great example of what you're talking about with maturity in the sense of it was almost like we, as an industry, we wanted decentralization because we felt like that was all we offered yeah. the world like that was our value proposition and so the the more decentralization the better and we had to exactly like, that's all we had to offer but now you're starting to hear all these like like decentralization is only a tool right it, like if you need to build a product that needs decentralization then it's an important tool but if your product doesn't require a lot of decentralization then sometimes that replication factor can slow you down and, and your user interface like there's other aspects to blockchain that um that have now started to rise and people starting to see like okay like it's not all just about having a decentralized version of something that already yeah. exists. It's actually more about using this tech stack for... You're so right. Because I remember, like, when I was doing my PhD, so I studied cryptography. And, like, at the time, blockchain is, like, obviously super interesting to a cryptographer. But at the same time, they were like, but why? Like, why, why do this? Okay, it's interesting, sure. But why does anybody need this? And, like, is this going to last? And, like... You know, why not just use a database? Like, right. why not just, yeah. why do you need a distributed ledger? Why not just use a database? And why not just use, like, there was, there were other ways to do sort of decentralized payments where you didn't need, like, a full blockchain or whatever. Mm-hmm. It was like, why not just use these simpler things? Whereas now it's like, okay, we've gone beyond 
like and it was always the question about what's the real use case here like when it, when someone comes up with a real use case then I'll care about blockchain this yeah. is what a lot of the like cryptographers were kind of saying at the time and um, but now it's like aha and it was also like also people within the blockchain industry as you were saying like decentralization was the thing that we could offer so like it was always about these were the metrics that we chased and mm. the same with like um and the, like and the competition was what we now call web 2 like uh, cloud services or whatever right. and so when we talked about computation or speed or whatever there was always the comparison against oh it's only you know 10x more expensive than uh, Amazon, but you still get this, you know, you get decentralization. Right, right. And so, like, these arguments were kind of not very compelling because it's like, okay, why do I need decentralization and why do I have to pay 10 times more for it? And, like, no one really had the answer. And, like, maybe there isn't a good answer to that question. Mm -hmm. But now we start to see that with all these kind of other features that come around with this maturity, it's like, aha, these are the things that Amazon cannot offer. And these are the things that are now becoming so efficient that they can compete in price and speed with like traditional cloud service providers. And like, uh, this is kind of one of the other things that a bit came out of um, like a few of the conversations during the week. That's kind of something that emerges as an idea in the, in the community now that like we, we, we're beyond web two like we are mm -hmm. actually realizing web three and it's not just about tokens or payments or whatever but it is like let's say the sort of dao style thing like web two can't really offer you a dao right like you can't really have i mean you need it's a decentralized system like you yeah. can't have this on a centralized system <laughs> like it's just it's as simple as that but the dao now is the use case for this and there's also things like um, like this open information question. This kind of came up a lot there as well. Like um, we need open information because if you think about even, I mean, so many things, but even for example, AI models coming up like in the future, if these are all wrong and closed systems, mm -hmm. I mean, who knows what is going in? Who knows what is happening? Who knows what is coming out? But these, whatever it is that's coming out is training you, is educating you, is informing you, is, you know, is your friend, whatever. Yeah. So if this is all closed, I mean, this is just crazy. So I think, yeah, these sort of, Use cases that emerge now, and even something like VetKeys, I think this is, or like having privacy, like decentralized privacy tools. Yeah. This is something that Web2 cannot offer either. Like, and so for me, these are the things that kind of Web2 can't do that we now start to see being realized in an efficient way. Is yeah. Something? That's that's like that's the perfect framing, right? It's we moved from an industry that you know we're just basically replicating what already exists on Web two, and then calling it and then being decentralized um, to now one where we're like actually we're building products that can't be built on Web two, yeah. and it's not like a decentralized version of what already exists. Um, yeah. You know, when when you mentioned AI, actually, I'm surprised there's not a lot of AI hype at. East Denver. I don't know if you've heard. heard I any. have seen some stuff, but I okay. talked to people who said that they saw a lot of cool stuff. So I okay. haven't seen it myself, but maybe I'm just looking more too much at the multi-chain uh, narrative. Um, I have my my interests, but uh, I've heard that there's a lot of cool stuff and like people doing some serious uh, decentral. Actually, there are some friends of mine who have a small company who do like ZKML, so like zero knowledge machine mm, learning. Yep. They've been here giving some talks. I heard of another few companies that are doing some like really interesting decentralized AI stuff as well. So I think a lot of it is maybe it's kind of starting. It's like maybe at the research stages, at the kind of prototype stages, at the proof of concept stages, mm -hmm. but not really, um, fully used and tested yet so yeah. it's, it's getting there i imagine maybe next year you see really really a lot but i think from the kind of research perspective it's happening i see okay it makes sense and i mean it, it it's a new avenue right it's a new um segment and just as crypto and blockchain took you know it was given 10 years to find kind of that like hey instead of just copying the you know what already exists and and moving on to this tech stack let's actually find out new innovative uses of the tech stack AI is going to need that time, or AI and blockchain at least, right, yeah. to, to kind of evolve. We do have like ELNA, ELNA. I know I was talking about them this morning with um, 
um, uh, it was a, I don't, I don't know, I don't want to say too many, I'm not going to say names, but it was a, it was a, um, a, a director at a, uh, for, a director of basic blockchain technology at a, a major U.S. financial institute, and she was saying, like, yeah, I'm really disappointed, I'm, I was hoping AI would take off, and I'm not, I haven't seen it yet so far, um, although she was on her way to uh, an AI summit, so uh, maybe she's going to hear more about it today, but you know, so I was mentioning ELNA, and uh, she was like, oh, wow, you know, an LLM in a smart contract, like, is that possible? And I was like, yeah, it's possible. So, like, we're still at that, like, is yeah. it possible? Mm. Here, somebody proved it's possible. Exactly. And now we have to maybe start figuring out what's the what's the product from there. And so, um, kudos to them. I know for my, I, I was able to give a talk yesterday, and that was, um, that, I, that idea of, like, thinking about blockchains as uh, technologies with interesting properties, not just like a token ledger, right, is kind of a key key part um, of like looking, you know, pick and choose just like how Uber was able to say, you know, um, GPS plus instant chat messaging plus credit card payments online. Those three things can be combined to form, you know, to something that can replace taxis. Um, that same like, concept is like, I think where people are starting to get to of like, it's not just about Bitcoin transactions exactly. like, or holding, holding Bitcoin. It's actually, so like, here's a good example. I've been showing people, people really found this uh, impressive. And I think I might be giving away my billion dollar product idea here, but I'm going to say it anyways, because <laughs> I've been showing people that I, I've, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll delete the Twitter space after this. Um, <laughs> but I've been showing people that I've, I inscribed my wedding anniversary uh, into Bitcoin, yeah. right? And that's just one of those simple things. The reason I did it was because I believe Bitcoin is the database that will outlive all databases. And now my wedding date is on Bitcoin. And so it'll outlive any other way I could store that, that kind of that artifact of, of my life. And yeah. so um, I don't know, it was kind of a cool, cool use case of thinking of the, you know, using Bitcoin as a database. Yeah. yeah, actually, I mean, I also, when I got married, I also talked about, like, we should have, like, a wedding registry service. On, I'm sure it exists, but, like... Uh, oh, like a, like a Web3 yeah, service? Yeah, like, uh, just... To, no, I mean, t like, some service to do these sort of inscriptions or to, oh, to do so, this. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, so now, I, now there's two people who agree this is a good product. Yeah. Uh, this might be something. I also talked to somebody else during the week who also thinks this is a good... Idea. Are they building something? No. Okay. So, it's so I've got a window open. open. Yeah. I but know. another thing I heard about, actually, now that you say this kind of real-world life events, um, another thing that I heard a lot this week, multiple times, is about inheritance, like solving this inheritance problem. In, like uh, physical inheritance? Like uh, passing down wealth from Yeah, generations? like exactly. Like, like Bitcoin. Like, I mean, s suppose you hold a lot of Bitcoin and you want um, it to be released to your kids or something if something should happen to you. Um, I think this is also like a quite nice, I mean, this can be all done automatically. Mm -hmm. um, this, yeah, and I think this is quite a nice way to have the smart contract. I think like very early on in the like conversations about smart contracts, there was a lot of like talk about, okay, they'll replace legal contracts. Right. Because this is what right. people knew when you compare it to what people know. And I think now it actually starts to happen that people uh, do start to replace legal contracts with these kinds of things. But again, it's because the industry is maturing and it is because we expect Bitcoin to last and it is because we expect it to still have value. Yeah, it definitely it definitely feels like it has gone from the, uh, like, let's just try around, but really, who knows if this industry, like, it, it's the conversation is very much like, we're, we're here, like, there's real innovation going on, and um, I don't know, the, the vibe is just so dynamic and vibrant, it's it's been incredible, and it, it comes, like, we, it was just, like, four months ago, like, we were in the doldrums of, like, the toughest time in crypto, right, like, the, the, there has never been a harder time for developers. Don't talk about the past. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't, like, exist anymore, like, yeah. when you're, you're talking with people, I, like, it's almost like that memory is, is long gone, and, yeah. and we're, uh, I don't know, like how quick, and it, and I think a lot of it is that people kept building, they kept their head down, and yeah. now that um, you know a mood has changed, uh, everyone's popping their head up and being like, "By the way, this is actually I've made these these advancements in that time." Yeah, um, exactly. And everyone's like wants to kind of show off their their awesome work during the during the hard times. Yeah, it's very cool. Actually, I've seen a lot of projects doing exactly this, and I mean, people. I don't know, it didn't feel like people disappeared from the scene or anything while, while there was this kind of hard times. Yeah. But uh, 
it somehow seems yeah that they pop up and it's like whoa you've been busy like this yeah. is so cool like and they have like a long list of stuff now to start releasing that everything is kind of picking up again it's right really cool right it'll be it'll be interesting to see what this this event is like next year i think they might have to expand to a new new building i've, I've heard rumors uh that they are and so i mean it, there's a lot of people i don't know what the numbers are but there's a lot of people here in denver ready to talk about what they've been building yeah it's cool i like to see it yeah any uh know, anything else so what has been the uh, highlight of your week what have you learned what is like a really what is the memory that'll stick in your mind forever Oh gosh, that's a hard question. What 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 is the memory you would inscribe? <laughs> what, what, what memory do I want to inscribe? Yeah. Um, I had a chance to have lunch with uh, Bob Bodley and Jordan last yesterday, and just some of the conversation in terms of like ways to use Bitcoin uh, was was really cool. Um, I got to see. Uh, I feel like Jordan is like top class uh, knowledge, but Bob was Bob was kind of schooling him on some of the things. Like the two of those minds of going back and forth was really cool. Um, but I think honestly, probably my favorite part is just like meeting these meeting meeting people who I've interacted with online all these times, and like meeting them in real life and seeing them as a, like a human being and not a PFP. And yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, it's easy to kind of just you know live in the digital world, and then you get out and you start seeing people and what's going on, and you're like, holy cow! Like, it feels like um, you know, I don't. I have a lot of like memories back. You know, maybe many of the people who listen to this or watch this uh, won't um, won't know this time. But like the early internet, when is that early? I mean, like when you had AOL, when you had to install a uh, DSP. <laughs> back in my day, you called in with a modem, and I remember just being like, uh, like I'd read the news online, and there was like it was nobody was really putting news online. You know, and then I would uh, go in a chat room and talk. But, like, that was the extent of the yeah. internet. And then and I would tell my parents, like, this thing is, like, really cool and stuff. And my dad would be like, well, why would I read the news online? Why would I spend the time to log into a yeah. computer? It takes 10 minutes to get online so I can read something when the newspaper is going to come. Yeah, yeah. And, and just not really having the answers then to be like, well, no, this seems like the future because I was too young. But now it's gotten to where... I feel like our industry was in that state maybe a couple years ago and just getting that feeling of like, oh, actually, there's like legitimacy here and the world is really about to like start to experience it in a real way. Yeah, you know? that's cool. Yeah. I think for me, one of the kind of highlights, someone actually, I was just walking yesterday with a Web3 friend who knows me as my PFP, basically. And then someone stopped me and was like, oh, you're the Vet Keys girl. Ah. And I was like, yeah, I'm the Bet Keys girl. Um, so it was really cool like that to see that people are paying attention to like the stuff that we're doing. Also, it's not just um, the multi-chain stuff, but also a lot of the other tools on the internet. Yeah. Oh, gosh. We didn't even touch into like some of the other stuff we're doing. Yeah. But I know we're running out of time. And uh, I don't know. Just everyone listening, this is just uh, it's a lot of excitement going on. Um, you know, I feel really honored to be part of the Internet Computer Project and, and, and the direction we're heading in. And um, I'm just excited that I get to watch everyone building out these awesome tools uh, that that uh, that are building out real businesses. So, actually, any, any closing words? That uh, no, I think uh, yeah, it was very nice. Thanks for having me. I think I'm excited for the year. I think a lot of stuff is going to happen. Everyone's super bullish, and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a super <laughs> great year. Awesome. Well, everyone, thanks for uh, tuning in, and uh, you'll hear more from all the interviews and talks we do from Eat Denver, but a lot of content coming out and, and you'll hear, you'll hear more uh, throughout the coming weeks. So take care. Thanks, Ashlyn. Bye-bye.